And uh, just to give those uh, first timers an opportunity to know exactly what we're talking about, and the bits and pieces we shared, I was able to make it to three sheets. I finally got to the fourth page out of eight, eight I have prepared. But uh, we talked about Malachi, the third chapter, verses one through uh, three, I believe. And we talked about the historical context. So we stayed true to the Bible, contextually, so no one can kind of say, hey, you took it out of context. Now we fulfilled that assignment. And then we also looked at it from another paradigm, which is uh, the prophetic implementation of that particular verse, mm -hmm. which historically John the Baptist fulfilled, but prophetically is an ongoing ministry or administration of the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And then I began to show you before I even, uh, I declared the end from the beginning like I always do in my teaching, I always put it all give you an opening statement, a paragraph or two, sometime a tape and a half, <laughs> just to let you know the backdrop of what I'm about to say for the remainder of the teaching. But then we went over to uh, Matthew 10, I mean Matthew 3, verses uh, 1 through, actually I wanted to start at 10, but we ended up going to 9 verses, and we had an opportunity to look at uh, some of the, th the ministries of John the Baptist, which is the type of the spirit of Elijah that many of us believe is going to be in the earth. But if you uh, believe in the last days, then you will uh, think that we're waiting on Elijah to show up once again. Mm -hmm. But we're not in the last days. Mm -hmm. The only uh, content or characteristics that should be uh, of any reference points for us is that he's going to take the high things and bring it down. So we talked about the, the landscape of bringing high things down and valleys up and crooked places straight and rough places plain. You know, that's a prophetic implementation for uh, contemporary prophets, which uh, not necessarily just prophets, but prophetic houses, which I believe somewhere along the line we will be a uh, prophetic house. Amen. Amen. That is the, ultimately the expectation of God for Christ the prophet to reign in the people. Hey. When you understand that you learn to cooperate with the greater graces in your life, then prophesying is easy. It's like you can do some of the things in your own natural tendencies. Mm -hmm. He blesses with his grace and becomes supernatural. Before you know it, you can prophesy at the drop of a hat without even having to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. Especially when you are uh, gathered together under one canopy, under one umbrella, when there's a corporate spirit where you can draw out of the well of that salvation yes, and it become easy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? So we went and we, let's just start there again, Matthew 3. Uh, I don't know if we made it to 1 Corinthians 3, did we? <laughs> no, we'll pass it now. We can get over here yet, Paul. First one, I'm going to go quick. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Next. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think they like when I say, come on, come on. Don't <laughs> sure, y'all. That's why I heard that look. <laughs> but this is he that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. How many know that wilderness is a transition? God was transitioning them out of one covenant to another covenant. And he had one who was going to be the narrative, which is saying, is John the Baptist. It says, and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather, or a leather girdle, about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. I'm not going to repeat all that because it'll, it'll have me chasing rabbits, okay? Verse 5. Then went out unto him, and, oh, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan. Mm hmm. And were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing what? Their sins. Their sins. Next. And then the uh, road, I mean, and then, uh, but, when they, <laughs> but, when, <laughs> but when he saw many of the Pharisees trying to hide out, come to the baptism, he said to them, uh-oh, you generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee the wrath from the wrath to come? And truly, that's why we started in Malachi 3, verse 1 through 3. He was talking to a priesthood. He was talking to... The Pharisees and Sadducees at that time were the contemporary part of the priesthood. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, back up. Seven. It said, he said, warn them to flee from the wrath to come. We established 
Now you have a new set of lenses when you read wrath. Am I right? If you've been in church any length of time, they told you that wrath was judgment day. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It was a wrath to come. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't get baptized, you don't repent and get baptized, you're, going, you're either going to turn or, or burn. burn. They never told you that even though you don't turn, you're still going to burn. Because <laughs> we're talking about the burn, am I right? Yes. And then the burn is the turn. Mm -hmm. Well, verse uh, 8. Bring forth, uh, bring forth therefore fruits, meat, for what? Repentance. Not an altar call. I didn't mention that last time. It's comprised of two words. They have highly misunderstood. You guys already know them. What's the first one? <laughs> Thank you. What's the other part? Noia. Metanoia. Let's put it together. Metanoia. Metanoia. Yes. The word meta in scriptures, you ever heard of metamorphosis? Yes. Mm -hmm. It means to change, change. Yep. or to transfer. It really means to transfer. But the theologians didn't, you know, didn't know where they were going to transfer from. <laughs> but it, 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 that's why, okay. Anyhow, but it means to transfer thought. In a, in a nutshell, it means we need to change our thought, transfer our thought. How many know we're not thinking any longer from the earth? How many know we're thinking from above? That's where, our, that's where we dwell, right? From where? Above. How many know that's not a direction? It's a dimension. We have to train ourselves to learn. That's why the Holy Spirit is in the earth, so we can think from another dimension. I, I, I really, I look forward to that day. We do it, on, we think from that dimension a lot more than what we are uh, aware of. Because most of us, because living in the Spirit is so dramatic, because in Pentecost, they packaged it for us and told us the limitations of operating that particular way. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And it gave us a list or a formula that told you when you get there, this is what's going to happen. Am I right? Help me out, y'all. Yeah. But it ain't as spooky as it seems. We operate in that dimension many, 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 many more times than we ever thought about because we only landlocked it, we only pigeonholed it to think of the signs that should follow them. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more of a power play than anything. If you say spirit to somebody, y'all looking at me funny, but that dimension has been packaged in Pentecost as something of exploits. Yes. Am I right? It works. Performance. Mm -hmm. You know, prophecy, denying gifts, the laying on the hands, all of that. Am I right? Mm -hmm. The ministry aspect. But Jesus didn't tell them just that we could have more ministry and that abundantly. Right. Amen. He came that we may have Life and that more abundant. Yes. Of course, look, ministry should flow out of life. Yes. Yes. It's not a separation of the two. If you get the life right, ministry is easy. If we live in the spirit, it's easy to walk. Y'all alright? Yes. I know I didn't give you this in the last three teachings, so I'm sorry. Next one. It's the quality of life. Exactly. It's not the quantity, it's the quality of life. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You know, and we say it sometimes, you know, you get around folks, they want to find out what Abraham you belong to. Oh, denominations. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Who do you belong to? Yeah. Are you for us or against us? Yeah. Remember the guy over in Joshua 5? Mm -hmm. Everybody want to know what side you're on. Yeah. You still have to tell them neither. That's what he said. Captain the Lord holds it. Neither. I'm sitting on his behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you tell him, say, you know what? That's a nice box. It's only, it's only good for decoration. Right. Right. <laughs> but you're not going to put me in that box. Right. So I'm, I'm not denominationally inclined. <laughs> not at all. Okay? Okay. So nothing attractive. <laughs> when you start to... See, see, when you live a life without labels, there's no attraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, everybody want to be defined. Everybody want to know, you know, what do you believe, Apostle? How do y'all do service? Am I right? Come on now. 
But when you're not committed to them because if they define you, they confine you. And Jesus told us the, the nature of being a new creation man. I don't know why I'm going tonight. I let me stop. I want to hurt and get done with this right. But anyhow, he told us the nature. He said in John, the third chapter, verse 8, he says, those that are born of, let me show you. Am I right? You know what it says? It says those that are born of the Spirit is like the wind. And they just go here and there. John 3 and 8, y'all. Jesus. <coughs> You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a list of scriptures I say all the time. <laughs> and then give it to y'all so y'all go ahead and have it, you know, look. The wind blows where it listens. And now here's the sound thereof, but you can't tell when it's coming and where it's going. So everyone that is born of the Spirit, that's the life I want. You talk about fluid. You talk about spontaneous. This is not a person that don't have no grounding. It's not talking about a person that's tumbleweed. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Tumbleweed saint, you know, always moving with the next wind. Mm -hmm. This is not tumbleweed saints. This is talking about a dimension in our understanding as we cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. That, Amen. Can you, uh, that's why he said his ways are past finding. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Can you live? I want to live where there's no shackles. Yes. We're coming into a place. Yes. Trust me, y'all. I'm going to put some notes last I got some thoughts last night. I'm going to put it in there about 2 o'clock. I said, I'll leave him alone. <laughs> but God was dealing with me, and he was kind of reiterating to me about dogma. And we don't know how dogmatic we are. And that's what keeps us so grounded. But God don't want us just to be grounded. Come on. He don't want us to be a loose cannon. He don't want us to be tossed to and fro. But as we relate to him, and whatever he decides to do at any given time, this is what the scripture 